Okay, human paper section is the challenge of resource management. And this first video is just going to introduce you to the whole ideas here, resource management and the supply and demand. And then a second video will talk about the UK. Okay, so the resource management, food, water and energy, fundamental to human development, of course. If you don't have resources, then you're going to have issues such as of, of lack of energy for people to work, lack of water to irrigate your fields, lack of energy to drive industrialization, etc., etc. So just the overview, I'm going to use good old bite-sized pages because they're, they're quite good for this. However, I would recommend that you go back and look at your textbook because in particular, this is an area where some of the key jargon for the AQA in the exam is found there. So this is just the overview. First of all, what's a resource? Well, resources are pretty obvious anything that is used by humans to meet their needs so the three that we're looking at are probably the three most fundamental after really shelter they are food water and energy so food people can't survive without food well stone me i didn't know that so about 2000 2500 calories per day is what people um, is estimated people need and if you're a rower you need more and if you're a uh, an xboxer you need less uh, but quite clearly, if I had lower than 2,000 to 2,500, I'm going to have something called undernutrition. Just physically don't have enough energy for the humans to survive. And you can go to your biology teacher and ask what happens if they don't, if people don't have enough food to survive. It is not a pretty sight. But of course, if you have malnutrition, you will end up with things like scurvy um, and rickets. And uh, those deficiency diseases may then have a knock on effect because people can't go and work in the fields and grow more food. So you end up with a negative multiplier effect, a spiral going on. OK, water. Now, clearly, water is vital. We need about 1.6 to 2 litres per day. But when you consider in the UK, we get through about 160 litres on average. You can understand that the, the demand for water depends on the society and what the society does. So not only is it need, needed for drinking, you with your water bottles in your lessons, but also it's needed for industry. It's needed for irrigation to grow crops. And also it's needed as a raw material in industrial uh, processes. So there's your, your field being irrigated. Okay, energy. Two types of energy. Primary energy, secondary energy. Primary energy, for example, is when people in northern Mali, which is a country south of Sahara, they gather up fuel wood from around them and they use the wood to boil their water to cook. That's primary energy. The heat released from burning the resource gives them the energy. Secondary energy, of course, is where you convert that thermal energy into electricity. And hence the picture here on this website of a beautiful power station. Now, within energy, we've got two different types of energy. We've got stocks, which are things that we burn and release the energy and they're gone. And we've got uh, flows, and that's renewable energy. So if you think about it, all renewables are interrupting a natural flow of something. Geothermal energy, the heat coming from the ground, being replaced by energy coming up from the core of the earth, that's renewable energy. Wind power, we're catching the flow of air molecules going through the air and turning it into electricity. Solar power is pretty obvious as well. There is a margin, of course, where if you can plant trees for everyone you're taking down and burning, then actually you've got a sustainable renewable resource from a tree. But if you keep burning lumps of wood, it takes millions and millions of years to create more lumps of wood. So that is not sustainable. So you've got sustainable energy and unsustainable energy, but more importantly, renewable and non-renewable energy. Uh, We'll come on to the UK. If you look at the UK, the really interesting things that are going on at the moment. The UK has finally stopped using coal, for example, um, and it, although it's still burning gas, so it's still burning a fossil fuel. So the distribution of resources, distribution, great geographical word, just meaning where is everything? So let's look at the idea of inequality. So the idea of inequality is that not all things are equal. Well, there we go. And one of those issues that comes up from inequality is the idea of security. And we'll first meet this with the idea of food security. Food security, quite simply defined, when people have enough nutrition and affordable diet to be able to um, survive. Food insecurity is the opposite, when people do not have enough nutritious and affordable food to eat. That might mean that they can't grow it, or it might mean that they can't afford to buy it. Obviously, as I've mentioned before, if you have a situation of food insecurity, you can end up with malnourishment and undernourishment. Again, go back and check what those two things are. 
So wealthy countries can afford to import food and also can afford, because food security is very important, can afford to pay farmers uh, some of their costs, which is called a subsidy, to be able to guarantee that a country has enough food. But things have gone way past that now for many HICs. We now are able to have unseasonal produce imported into our country. And when you look at the UK, that's one of the key themes, the whole idea then of carbon footprint and the idea of food miles. What is the true carbon dioxide emission from getting food being grown, harvested, processed, transported to my plate? And of course, part of that is dependent on the length of distance that these things have traveled. And we'll come on to those later on. So we can have positions of food surplus where we go a lot more crop than I need. Hopefully you can sell it and you have food deficit where we just do not have enough food to meet the needs of the people. It's actually the same with water, though food is kind of obvious, water less so. There are some places where there is physical water insecurity. There's not enough rainfall to meet the needs of the people to keep the quality of life up. And there is economic insecurity when people actually can't afford to buy the water or can't afford the country can't afford to put in big irrigation schemes, reservoirs, pipelines, etc. Hence, we get water surplus and water deficit. And energy is exactly the same. Typically, HICs and NEEs, know your terms, they have a high demand for energy because we have types of societies now where we burn fossil fuels in our cars or we burn fossil fuels in our power stations to make the electricity to put in our cars. We have lights, we have computers, etc. So we have high demand for electricity. That's a high demand for secondary energy energy whereas LICs typically do not have such high standards of living they do not have so many gadgets that use electricity that therefore require fossil fuels they tend to be more reliant on primary industry as I've mentioned before and then of course there are some countries that are rich in fossil fuels and there are some countries that are rich in geothermal such as New Zealand and Iceland where in fact their consumption of, of energy may be very high but that's simply because they've got abundant energy coming out of the ground. Energy insecurity, just like water and food insecurity, there just isn't enough energy to allow the country to move forward in its standard of living. Okay, one of the most obvious graphics ever seen in your entire life. Um, I like the particular gaming console there, but those are the broad ideas of energy security and energy insecurity.